The world-famous tunnel connecting England and France under the English Channel is truly a marvel of modern engineering just over 50 kilometers long. It is a testament to human ingenuity and determination, but it is overshadowed by the monumental ambition of Chinese engineers. In a bold move that defies all expectations, these visionary engineers have embarked on the construction of a tunnel that will surpass even the longest tunnels known to man. This ambitious 128-kilometer project will redefine all boundaries of tunneling. To put this in perspective, imagine a marathon runner who has consistently covered the distance in five hours over the years, but is outpaced by a fast competitor from Nigeria who effortlessly completes the race in just three and a half hours, all barefoot. But why, you may ask, do we need such a colossal tunnel? The answer lies in its purpose to accommodate a modern railroad line that will run trains powered by electricity. The scale of this project carries a hefty price tag. It's estimated that the total construction cost will be a staggering 45, 50 billion. This figure, while astronomical, pales in comparison to the exorbitant sums often associated with similar projects such as the bridge to Crimea. It is remarkable that the Chinese have managed to achieve such results while maintaining a level of economic efficiency that is unparalleled in the world of infrastructure development. In contrast, in European countries or Russia, where labor remuneration is higher and corruption often takes on alarming proportions, the cost of the same tunnel would likely have reached 80, 90 billion or even more. This is the true miracle of this project. Not only is it a testament to human innovation, but it also serves as a stark reminder of the importance of effective and transparent governance in realizing the seemingly impossible. In the northeastern expanse of China lies a bay so vast that it is often compared to a sea, the Bohai Bay. Its shores are home to 160 million people, a population that exceeds even the population of all of Russia in its most prosperous years. At the center of the bay is the industrial center of Tianjin, while sprawling megacities continue to grow with no end in sight. The bay is ringed on two sides by the Liaodong and Shandong peninsulas, with the bustling cities of Dalian and the former Port Arthur on one side, and the remnants of German and British outposts around Qingdao and Wei Highway on the other. However, despite the bustling activity and lively trade, the Gulf presents a serious barrier to interstate communication. To get from one peninsula to another, one must travel more than 1,500 kilometers by land alone. Although ferries have long been a partial solution to the problem, even the fastest of them struggle to cover the 150 kilometer distance in less than eight hours. Disregarding the logistical problems, the People's Republic, which has more resources, decided to bridge the gap literally. The original plan was to build a monumental bridge across the space, but ambition soon exceeded expectations and the decision was made to embark on an even more audacious endeavor, the construction of an underwater tunnel. In this underwater marvel, cars and passengers would travel through the tunnel by rail, housed in passenger cars and on open platforms. This design choice, while unconventional, is a nod to the complexities of ventilation when faced with the challenge of thousands of engines in motion. Electric-powered locomotives will travel back and forth seamlessly, leaving a minimal environmental footprint. In the annals of infrastructure, this endeavor is a testament to human innovation and determination. The Bohai Bay Tunnel is taking shape beneath the waves, heralding a new era of connectivity and accessibility where distance is no longer an insurmountable barrier, but rather simply an inconvenience to be overcome. In the tangled web of economic planning, Chinese economists make a compelling case for prioritizing rail over highway construction, citing its unmatched versatility as a key factor. While the prospect of implementing both projects simultaneously may seem tempting, the accompanying financial burden would simply be prohibitive. The decision to focus on the rail line was the result of a host of cost-saving measures carefully considered throughout the project. Every aspect, from optimizing the delivery of materials and finished goods, to minimizing transportation ends and reducing the burden on existing routes, 
was carefully analyzed to maximize efficiency and minimize costs. In addition, the decision to abandon a ferry service considered obsolete and irrelevant globally further increases the potential for significant annual savings. The foresight and strategic planning demonstrated by the authorities of the Republic could pay significant dividends, with projected annual savings of up to $5 billion. Such prudent financial management will ensure that the country not only recoups its initial investment of $45, $50 billion, but also paves the way for a prosperous future. The realization of this ambitious 10-12 year project is a testament to the country's unwavering commitment to progress and innovation. However, as in any ambitious endeavor, patience is paramount. The projected completion date of 2030 to 2032 may seem far off, but it serves as a stark reminder that greatness is not achieved overnight. Like the bold ideas of orbital elevators and hyperloops, realizing this project will require unwavering dedication and tireless effort. Even for a power like China, the road to success is paved with challenges that must be overcome with determination and fortitude. But as history has shown time and again, the rewards for perseverance are extraordinary.